Well, it's time for me to do a lighting tutorial. Hey everyone, and welcome to another Innistrad the Mother. Well, in this video, I'm going to finally do a lighting tutorial. I've been asked a number of times to do this type of tutorial, but I've been hesitant to do so up until now because I never really considered myself an expert in this subject. But after completing a number of different uh, projects now, I feel at least confident in sharing with you what I do and how I approach this subject. Now I know lighting can be a bit intimidating to a modeler and I know it was for me when I first started, but I think you'll quickly realize that it's become fairly easy to do so. I'm sure at one point it was difficult, but uh, with all the options that we have available now, uh, it's become a lot easier to incorporate this into your projects. Now again, I still don't consider myself a complete expert on lighting, but I am going to show you uh, the methods that I've used, uh, which are simple and easy, and result in bringing your model to that next level. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what I've started off with here is just a sheet uh, that I've laid out some different options that I've used. And uh, so let's go ahead and start off with the LED or light emitting diode. And I'm sure most of you have seen these. And first of all, I don't want to imply that working with these are extremely difficult. But of course, you do have to make some calculations and uh, you have to buy resistors separately and so forth. And many of us, including myself, don't really want to take the time to mess with that. So that's where pre-wired options tend to really be very helpful. And that's really been a key for me is being able to find pre-wired options through the Internet. So as you see, they are wired already with resistors. When I purchase these, I make sure I purchase ones that are able to handle up to a 9 volt power source. Uh, you can certainly purchase uh, ones with resistors that go higher than that, but um, typically my goal is to try to make the model self-sufficient enough to where I won't have to rely on an outlet. Now LEDs obviously come in various sizes. Um, I've worked with 5 millimeter, 3 millimeter, and what you see here are 1.8 millimeter LEDs. And these are more pre-wired options here. I've gotten them from a place called modeltrainsoftware.com, which you're going to hear me refer to a number of times. And um, I don't have any ownership in that company. I don't have any affiliation other than the fact that I've had really good experience with them. Uh, they've been very, very helpful with um, answering my questions and uh, at least giving me advice as I've purchased items from them. So I, I make sure I'm purchasing the, um, the correct item for the, uh, the lighting that I'm looking for. And uh, what you have here is a strip uh, LED. And this is an option actually that got me started in the whole process of lighting because this is the type of lighting that came with the 1350 scale Enterprise model. Now when that ship came out, I did want to light it, uh, but I wasn't looking forward to soldering everything together. And, uh, but uh, they sold the kit separately, and uh, all the lighting that was included were of this sort here. Now these come in strips. They have adhesive on the other side so you can mount them. And uh, you can connect them and cut them, by the way, in different lengths and um, connect them with these uh, devices here. These allow you just to slide in the uh, strip into this connector and uh, you don't have to solder a thing. So these are great options, particularly if you have a long area that you need to light inside a model. Um, good source for these, cultivman.com, sells a lot of different options. Here's another example of some strip lighting. And uh, this one in particular I bought from cultivman.com. And uh, this is the box that came in. This was made by Paragraphics, which I have their own website, by the way. And incidentally, white lights come in either warm white or cool white. Uh, just depends on the look that you're after. Let's go ahead and move on now to SMD or surface mounted devices. Um, as the name implies, these are surface mounted and they tend to be smaller. And um, these are very, very useful in tight, confined spaces. Uh, you can imagine if you have a small scale model, it's going to be really tough to fit something like this in, or even a 1.8 millimeter. So if you need something that's really tiny, that will fit into really tight spaces, this is the way to go. And if you review my uh, pre previous videos that are fairly recent, uh, you'll see that I've been utilizing these a lot because I've been working with smaller scale model kits. So this particular, uh, or these particular lights I've gotten from modeltrainsoftware.com as well. And they call them chip size lights. And uh, they come in different sizes. They have chip size, a nano size, and a pico size. Um, so they get fairly, fairly tiny. And it's surprising how much light gets emitted from these little uh, SMD lights here. They either come like this here without a resistor. So this can handle up to a 3 volt uh, battery source, like the coin size battery or you can have them ordered with a resistor, and this will handle up to a 9 volt. Now, other options that you have besides size are the 
types of lighting effects that they can emit. Uh, obviously, you have ones that stay lit all the time, so very steadily. You have others that flicker. You have others that can give you a strobe effect. Um, there are some that dim on and off. So there are a number of different options that you can consider. Again, uh, just seek out different sources online. I've, again, had a lot of success with ModelTrainSoftware.com because uh, they, uh, they've just made a lot of things fairly easy for me. Now, one type of lighting I'm not going to talk about is fiber optics. If you want more information about fiber optics, you can utilize fiberopticsstore.com as a source. Highly would recommend them. They've got all kinds of information there about fiber optics lighting. I've only done one project with fiber optics, and it utilized LEDs like this. It was the Battlestar Galactica original series uh, model. And uh, what's cool about those types of things is you can provide lighting to a lot of different areas in your model by utilizing these types of cables. Um, but again, I'm just going to stick to this type of lighting in this tutorial. All right, I want to spend a few minutes talking about wiring and switches. Uh, switches, you have a number of different options, including these push switches that you see here. You've got uh, slide switches, toggle switches. You have some that are already hooked into a... a you know, a compartment for a battery. So a lot of different options as to which one to go with. You know, for me, it's just been personal preference as to which one I think is going to be concealed better. Uh, again, you want an option that's going to be easily accessible and easy to work with. And uh, again, this particular one here, you have the switch hooked into the power source uh, compartment. Uh, this one, by the way, you see there's two push switches. Uh, this allows you to um, have one 9-volt battery and you have the ability to turn on and off um, different types of light on your model if you don't want them lit um, concurrently with just one switch you want control of lighting separate uh, lights uh, you can utilize something like this. So with regard to battery sources most of my projects have involved utilizing either a 3 volt or 9 volt. I have found them easier to conceal and work with. I do have one that has a 6 volt uh, power source hooked into it. Kind of bulky to work with. Um, so I've basically limited myself to these two power sources here. I do have one that you plug into the wall. That's that one 350 scale Enterprise, but there's a lot of lights in that one. So um, most of my projects have been fairly s small and easily powered by these types of power sources here. Um, wiring, you uh, want to use something that's going to be fairly thin. When I first started out, I was using heavier wiring, but I found it much easier to use thin wire. Um, this modeltrainsoftware.com. I'm sure you can find it at Fry's as well, but I got this uh, particular supply from them. And uh, you saw from my earlier um, video there that they even have thinner wires for the um, chip and nano size uh, SMD lights. Um, but the thinner the wire, the easier it is to fit into places. You know, you can move in and out of areas with um, much less effort uh, as you would imagine a wire of this gauge. So again, you just want to make it easy on yourself and um, you know, utilize something that's going to fit into the space that you're working with. All right, next thing I want to talk about are some other supplies, um, including soldering materials. And soldering is something that uh, people seem to be a bit intimidated with or just don't want to mess with. Um, honestly, I find that I have more confidence in knowing that the connections are going to be soldered versus just uh, twisting them together and connecting them with electrical tape, which you can do. Um, but uh, it doesn't take very much uh, practice to learn how to use this. Um, so I would highly encourage you to get a soldering iron. It doesn't uh, cost much. And a couple other supplies that you need that are helpful are uh, a stand like this. Uh, I got this at Fry's, very inexpensive. I think it was under $10. comes with a little sponge. Um, and it gives you an area to hold your soldering iron in. Uh, the little stand that this comes with is not very effective, so I'd recommend you know, getting something like that. Also, uh, something like this you can find at Harbor Freight or at Fry's. Uh, it gives you the ability to hold wires together, so you don't um, basically giving you a third hand, essentially, uh, and that way you can balance everything as you solder your connections. Um, again, I'd encourage you to try this because um, it just uh, gives you more assurance everything's going to hold together um, and you don't have to you know do a perfect job at it no one's you know judging you with how well you solder uh, everything's going to be hidden inside the model so as long as you get that good strong connection i think you'll feel more confident things are going to stay together shrink tubing is something you're going to need if you do decide to solder shrink tubing comes in different sizes as well uh, this again just adds further protection uh, with those connections that you're um, 
you know, soldering together. Uh, you just slide this stuff on and heat it up with the uh, soldering iron. Everything shrinks down and um, really good way to insulate everything there. Uh, you do need some wire strippers. Uh, this here is a stripper that has uh, or can accommodate various gauges of wire. Um, it takes a little bit of practice to, to do this, um, so just take your time. Uh, once you get the hang of it, you know how much pressure to utilize with this uh, in order to strip off the coating uh, on these wires. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end this first part here. And uh, my goal with this video was just to give you an idea of the types of LEDs that are available, the kinds that I've worked with, and some of the supplies that are needed to uh, do lighting. So part two is going to get more into the strategies with lighting, what to think about when you are lighting your model, the approach you need to take, and uh, some ideas on how to install them as well. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to contact me as usual at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com or here at my YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you then in part two.